His huge collections were insane of Easter eggs and paper airplanes and rare records. He had about a million and sixty. To change America through music was his hope, and to make some money because he was broke, he compiled a triple-decker collection of songs from his records, released as the Smithsonian Anthology of American Folk. On a Monday morning, just about nine o'clock, the great shores had it, began to reel and rock. Husbands and wives, little children lost their lives. Wasn't it sad when that great ship went down? Smith's plan began to work as foretold. This weird music began to take hold. It sparked an interest in these forms of life underground from the norms, and soon millions of folk records were being sold. By the early 60s, Dylan, Joan Baez, Phil Oakes, they were all inspired by those old folks. Then one strange folk band downtown, called the Holy Modal Rounders, began to make it more anarchistic with weird voices and drug jokes. Mom's out there, switching in the kitchen, and Dad's in the living room, grousing and a bitch, and I'm out here, kicking the gong for euphoria, euphoria. When your mind starts reeling and walking, your inside voices start squealing and squawking, floating around on a belladonna cloud, singing euphoria. And in 1965, in the Ludlow Street dive, <laughs> Jack, <laughs> Lou Reed and John Cale in a Ludlow Street dive, very nearby in 1965, had a similar musical spin, also on acoustic guitar with violin, with even more New York Street drug jive. Hey, white boy, what you doing uptown? Hey, white boy, you chasing our women around? No, pardon me, sir, nothing to be further from my mind. I'm just waiting for a dear, dear friend of mine. Holy Modal Rounders met some other beatnik intellectual thugs over on 10th Street who called themselves the Fugs. The Fugs were recorded by Harry Smith playing the punkiest songs yet to exist. Lo-fi, noisy stuff about poetry, sex, and drugs. I don't have a bedtime, I don't need to come, for I have become an amphetamine bum. If you don't like sleeping and don't want to screw, then you should take lots of amphetamines too. Harry Smith recorded two fog sessions including Tully Kuferberg's amazing song, Nothing. Monday, nothing. Tuesday, nothing. Wednesday, Thursday, nothing. Friday for a change, a little more, nothing. Saturday, once more, nothing. Fucking nothing, sucking nothing. Flesh and sex, nothing. Church and Times Square, Social anthropology, nothing, 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 nothing. The Fugs were real poets with real topics to speak out, and through the new underground scene, this strange music could leak out, beginning the punk idea that anybody could do it without needing much musical ability to it. And this new crazy music was soon labeled Freak Out. In 1966, the Fugs signed to New York label ESP. The same label put out a band called The Gods, spelled with a Z. The Gods accomplished the feat of making even the Fugs music sound sweet, with the least musical folk punk racket in history. Meow. 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 underground music was really different from mainstream. It was intellectual, but it was noisy and hectic. And then the Velvet Underground went electric and made folk punk more beautiful and more extreme. I'm waiting for the man. Got $26 in my hand. A 
Talk to less than ten, one, two, five. Feel sick and dirty, more dead than alive. I'm waiting for the man. It seems nothing could stop New York's strange folk punk tide. In 1968 came David Peel and the Lower East Side. They recorded an album out in the street, screaming and sloppy. They were signed to Elektra Records and sold a whole lot of copies with songs like I Like Marijuana and Up Against the Wall, Motherfucker, Inside. Yeah. Mother, where is my father? Where is my brother? They're at war. They're at war. And the Stooges were a freak-out band in Detroit. But folks ignored them until Danny Fields brought them to New York and had John Cale from the Velvets record them. While most acid rock was turning into progressive, the Stooges pushed the raw and aggressive, and Iggy Pop sang about degradation and boredom. Well, it's 1969, okay? War across the USA. Another year for me and you. Another year with nothing to do Another year for me and you Another year with nothing to do And in 1970, David Peel's second album came With some amazing songs and some a little lame In most pre-punk histories, David Peel gets forgot Because he was a hippie singing lots of songs about pot But his second album was the first album with the real sound That electric punk rock soon became From the Lower East Side We don't give a damn if we live or die We are from the Lower East Side We don't give a damn if we live or die Then an East Side guitarist named Patti Smith began playing music with this East, Well, an East Side poet named Patti Smith, sorry Began playing music with this East Side guitarist named Lenny Kay And they would use it to mix poetry with simple rock stuff Like the Fugs in a way, but less rough a postmodern way to take high art and low art and fuse it. And his eyes, his head split open, his eyes were like two wide opals, and the ship slid open. I said, Oh, I'm going up, up, oh, take me up, 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 where are we? is when the New York Dolls start, mixing trash and drag fashion with a rock and roll heart. The Johnny Thunders, David Johansson sound mixed the old style simple rock with the new New York underground and sort of defined the moment when stupid on purpose became the new smart. <laughs> And the Lower East Side of New York began punk fashion as well, with spiked hair and ripped clothes worn by a poet named Richard Hell. Hell was in television, the Neon Boys, the Heartbreakers, the Voidoids, and he wrote the song that gave the new 70s punk generation its first anthem yell. CBGB started having punk shows with television, Patti Smith, and the Ramones. 76 punk fanzine began, then the whole thing moved to England. England stole all the credit, and that's how it goes. The end. Whee! Complete history of the development of punk on the New York's Lower East Side, 1950 to 1975.